Today I've got a nice integral from everyone's favorite internet integral suggester. So what we want to do here is evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of 1 minus x over x squared plus 1. And the first way that I tried to do this was to rewrite it as the natural log of 1 minus x times y, and then expand it into a double integral. But then I found I was just kind of going around in circles. In other words, like a bunch of stuff canceled and I was just back at the original integral. So the other way to do it, which was the suggestion of the integral suggester, is to use a trigonometric substitution. Of course, this x squared plus 1 in the denominator gives you a hint at a trig substitution, but I thought I could get away not using trig substitution with my double integral trick. But maybe that is still possible, I just couldn't crack it. Let me know in the comments if you can crack it using a double integral or with Feynman's trick. Okay, so since we've got an x squared plus 1, that gives a hint as to a tangent substitution. So let's maybe set u equal to tangent theta. So that means that du is equal to secant squared theta d theta. And then also x squared plus 1 is also secant squared theta. So this is by the derivative of tangent. And this one right here is just by some trigonometric identities. Okay, so let's put a box around those. That's what's happening with these variables. And then let's see what happens with the endpoints here. Um, I guess I should say here, this is not u, but this is x equals tangent theta. Okay, nice. So now notice when x is equal to 0, that means tangent of theta equals 0, which means theta is equal to 0. Next, when x is, x is equal to 1, that means tangent of theta is 1, which means theta is equal to pi over 4. So that gives us some new bounds of integration in this like theta world. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have the integral from 0 to pi over 4. Notice we'll start with the natural log of 1 minus tangent theta. And then we'll see that the dx term that gives us a secant squared and the x squared plus 1 term in the denominator cancel that secant squared and we just have a d theta here. So that's some nice simplification. Okay, so now what should we do here? Well, let's take this tangent and rewrite it as sine over cosine. So let's maybe put here that we can notice that 1 minus tangent theta is the same thing as 1 minus sine theta over cosine theta, which is the same thing as cos theta minus sine theta all over cos theta. Okay, but then putting this into the natural log, we see that the natural log of 1 minus tangent theta is equal to the natural log of cos theta minus sine theta minus the natural log of cosine theta, where of course we've used a logarithm rule to turn this quotient into a difference. Okay, so that's kind of our next round of kind of basic calculations. So let's see, that allows us to rewrite this as the sum, or maybe I should say the difference of two integrals. So I have the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the natural log of cos theta minus sine theta d theta, and then minus the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the natural log of cosine theta d theta. Now if we look at this, this guy right here looks pretty similar to an integral that we've seen on the channel before, but that integral had endpoints 0 and pi over 2. And with 0 and pi over 4, that one's a little bit trickier. So what we'll do instead is focus on this first integral and see if we can simplify that at all. And we can, and we can do that with, let's see, maybe a change of variables again. So since we're dealing with angles here, maybe I'll keep using Greek letters for angles. So let's maybe set phi equal to pi over 4 minus theta. Notice that means that d phi is equal to minus d theta. 
And also, when theta is equal to zero, that tells us that phi is pi over four. And when theta is pi over four, that tells us that phi is equal to zero. So let's notice that this essentially switches the bounds of integration, but then this minus sign will switch them back. One other thing that we'll use is the sum angle formula for cosine and sine. And that has the effect that cosine of theta, which is in fact cosine of pi over four minus phi, just because of the inverse relationship here, minus sine of theta, which is pi over four minus phi, has a pretty nice simplification. So this simplifies to the square root of two times sine of phi. So I'll let you guys check that if you need to look at the sum or difference angle formulas for cosine and sine, but that's a fairly simple calculation. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So this first integral can be rewritten as the integral from zero to pi over four. And then we'll have the natural log of the square root of two times the sine of phi d phi. And if you're worried about those bounds of integration, remember that they changed orders because theta changed to phi, but then they changed back because of that minus sign. Okay, and then here we'll have minus the integral from zero to pi over four of the natural log of cos theta d theta. Okay, next thing we can do is use a product rule for the log. So it'll turn a product inside the logarithm to a sum outside of the logarithm to rewrite this as the integral from zero to pi over four of the natural log of the square root of two d phi plus the integral from zero to pi over four of the natural log of sine phi d phi. And then we have minus the integral from zero to pi over four of the natural log of cosine theta d theta. But now let's notice that this that phi is just a dummy variable here, so we might as well change it back to the theta so it can interact with this guy. And we can do that without any penalty at all. We're just setting theta equal to phi here. So that'll change this to theta, this to theta. And then this guy right here is the integral of a constant. So that gives us pi over four times the natural log of the square root of two for this. Again, it's the integral of a constant over an interval of length pi over four. And now we can put these back together again using a logarithm rule to give us the integral from zero to pi over four of the natural log of tangent theta d theta. Okay. Now we'll essentially bring that to the next board, but I'm gonna bring it in a slightly changed form. I'm gonna take this natural log of the square root of two and write it as one half times the natural log of two, again, using some logarithm rules. Okay, so let's bring that step up here and then we'll move towards the end. So this is where the last board left us. I combine that half with the pi over four to give me pi over eight times the natural log of two minus the integral from zero to pi over four tangent theta d theta. Now we're ready to make another substitution. So the substitution I'll make here is back to an x variable. And so I'll set x equal to the tangent of theta. So let's see what that leaves us with. So like I said, we're gonna set x equal to tangent of theta. Let's just be sure to notice here that this is occurring in this integral right here. Although that's the substitution that we used here too, which I think is pretty interesting. Okay, if x is tangent theta, that means that theta is equal to the arctan of x, which tells us that d theta is equal to dx over one plus x squared. Okay. Furthermore, when theta is equal to zero, we get x is equal to zero. And when theta is equal to pi over four, we get x is equal to one. Okay, nice. So let's put a box around that. That's the substitution we're using now to rewrite that second integral. So that leaves me with pi over eight times the natural log of two minus the integral from zero to one of the natural log of x over x squared plus one dx. So something like that. Now what we'll do is expand that x squared plus one using a geometric series. 
So let's do that here. So let's note that one over x squared plus one is the same thing as one over one minus negative x squared. But now using a standard geometric series formula, that gives us the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus x squared to the n power, which is minus one to the n x to the two n. Okay, so that's what we'll use here. And here we satisfy the dominated convergence theorem so we can interchange the order of summation and integration. Okay, so that's gonna eventually lead me with the pi over eight times the natural log of two, and then I'll have minus the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n, and then the integral from zero to one of x to the two n times the natural log of x dx. So we've got something that's looking pretty nice right there. Okay, now where should we go from here? Well, I think maybe another substitution will make it very clear what's going on. So for that last substitution, maybe I'll set y equal to the natural log of x. So let's see, that means that x is equal to e to the y. And furthermore, it means that dx is e to the y dy. Now let's see what happens to the bounds of integration. When x is equal to zero, that means that y is approaching negative infinity, whereas when x is equal to one, that means y is equal to zero. Okay, so that'll be a substitution that will take us to the end. So now we'll have pi over eight times the natural log of two minus, just bringing this down, the sum as n goes from zero to infinity minus one to the n, the integral from minus infinity up to zero of, let's see what we have. This thing right here will be e to the two times n times y, and then another e to the y, and then a y from this. So we'll have y e to the two n plus one times y dy. And now maybe I'll leave this as a homework exercise. This is a simple integration by parts. And upon evaluating it, you'll see that the final answer will be pi over eight times the natural log of two minus our sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of minus one to the n over two n plus one squared. But lucky for us, this sum it doesn't really have a closed form in terms of like pi or e or natural logs, but it has its own name and that's Catalan's constant. So this sum right here is called Catalan's constant and generally denoted as capital G. So Catalan's constant. So that gives us a nice form for our final answer of pi over eight times the natural log of two minus this constant G. And that's a good place to stop.